It is September the 25th, 2021, and you're watching and listening to The Future of Photography. The Future of Photography. And we're back with another episode of The Future of Photography with uh, we, I mean, Adrian, Jeremiah, Hello. And myself, Imar. Jeez. She's Sadly, doing, no Ema this week. She's yeah, doing important this. things. No, um, <laughs> it's totally fine. Has she been replaced by a little grey robot? I can see. On this hey, yeah, I put a robot on the screen for her. Um, cool. Ah, let's see, episode one ninety six. Um, Adrian, you have been to a show on the weekend. I have. I've been the... out, and I've been out to meet my friends and see stuff. And, You're actually and among among real people, like. Uh, physical yeah, yes. you, physical, you could real touch people. people did you did you rub a lot of <laughs> elbows or did you uh well uh do you know what this is um this is a, a really interesting piece of it the the scary bit was going on the tube actually in london uh, it's the first <laughs> time see, i've done I that see, see. uh and uh that was a little bit uh close for comfort at times um but uh no we've been i've been out i've been out for a trip to the photography show at uh, the uh, national exhibition center the nec in birmingham in right in the middle of england and I did that to meet up with a whole bunch of friends and also, of course, to cover the show for the future of photography and find out what was coming down the pipeline at us. So, um, you know, today, lots of stories to tell uh, about that. And uh, yeah, it was a really good fun day out, actually. It was nice to be to be back in that kind of environment. Of course, last year's one was cancelled probably about four times, like everything else was cancelled last year. Uh, oh, yes. And and, so th this uh, was a real proper trade show with the floor, with with boots, with people walking around with bags, collecting free stickers and that, the stuff that you do on, on that trade sort shows. of thing. Yeah, I mean, it's so I mean, it is a show that's very much focused at consumers rather than trade. So, right. you know, but it is that exactly that thing. It's an exhibition hall full of stands, full of stuff that you can touch. And was play it as with full and, as last time it happened? Uh, that's a really, really good question. I haven't seen the official numbers yet, but what the, one of the things they did do to make it safer was that they put it into a bigger hall, so there was more uh. space. Yeah, the aisles were wider, more space between the stands and stuff like that. So the same number of people wouldn't have looked quite so many. I think from from friends of mine who had stands there, um, I, they they seemed to think that it was slightly less busy, but I think overall they were pleased with the turnout, and certainly there were certainly there were a good lot of people there on the saturday when i went so um yeah i think uh, overall uh give, given all the circumstances i i think the show could be considered to be a success but uh, right I, you, need to, I need to catch up with the marketing people from the show actually and feel what they think of it but um so you you have not just been there for for tfop you have been there in your capacity as one of the members of the sunny 16 show <laughs> And uh, I did that, yes, and, have, and as and as an enthusiastic punter as well, <laughs> and that as well. I have I've uh, queued up uh, a video that uh, you posted <laughs> or that Sunny Sixteen posted. Here is uh, Adrian on the screen with a very professional-looking microphone and two friends, and uh, this, uh, yeah, th there's this is an entire. Let me see, this is like thirty-five minutes long, and uh, yeah, um, and that's it's a very edit. good <laughs> overview. So, so we are we are going to hand people off to sunny 16 at this point but um what can you tell us it's about all... it sorry well, go ahead. besides besides, go ahead. besides getting all dressed up to do this <laughs> what man jeans and a t-shirt <laughs> <laughs> so uh yeah well um what can i tell what can i tell you about yeah. it um, and, and and sunny 16 for, for those oh stop the music here for those who who don't know sunny 16 is is very uh, very analog film photography focused. So um, it is. Yes, the, 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 there were certainly more than just film cameras on. The oh yes, yes. So now I can was I, there. Can I ask? A, can I ask you a question that, that fits right in between what uh, what Chris has just asked and your answer? Sure. Parenthetically, is what do you think the ratio of interest in analog versus digital was overall? Just your intuition. Oh, it's almost as if you've read the show notes, Jeremiah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like, Which he has. Is, do we have? Do we have show notes? <laughs> we do. <laughs> we do now. Um, 
that is the right question um uh and yeah it is part of uh part of the experience that i had so so uh yeah so yes um i was there i mean one of the benefits of, of the sunny 16 crew is we're all based in the uk so four out of five of us were there rachel who's just had a little baby constance she's not able to make it uh but the other four of us are there so me graham john and claire all met up you won't see john on the video because he was behind the camera um so he, he did some sterling work or uh, you know camera work and on uh and on the edit as well uh but four out of the five of us from sunny 16 were there um so yeah so they're they're clearly you know that group and 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 friends of ours that relate to that group uh you know, have an analog bias uh, but of course i was trying to also covered for future of photography you know for tfop and uh if only to justify my press pass which said tfop on it <laughs> oh you've got one okay <laughs> oh yeah 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 we, we we've done this for a couple of years now and we actually now know uh through sunny 16 originally but we now know the marketing people and yeah and stuff like that so yeah we we do we, we do um get to have a few conversations in preparation for the show rather than just turn up um, but uh, yeah, to to go back to to Jeremiah's question, I'll tell I'll tell you a story. Um, I'll tell you a story, really, because it is because I was wandering around this show trying to cover the show for TFOP, and I was thinking, okay, right, I've I've got to I've got to cover stuff. I've got to see this and I've got to see that, and I'm looking for the new stuff, and I'm looking for the stuff that's interesting and different, and I just couldn't find it. And I was like, oh, for, for a while, I was thinking, do you know what? what is going to be right how am i going to report this this on on tfop how what, what is my story going to be what is my angle into this going to be not you mean there's no future in training. photography <laughs> right the future looks grim <laughs> no no the it's future looks hole. great the future <laughs> looks great but it the 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 going back to jeremiah's question all of the innovative innovation the entrepreneurial stuff all of that seemed to be in the analog space not it's in the wild. digital space not That's in the digital space wow, really? and it's so yes of course i went to the canon stand <laughs> and the nikon stand and the fuji stand and yes they had cameras there that people could play with and and stuff like that um but yeah, and, and of course, you know, there have been a bunch of new digital cameras released in the last year that have never been on a trade show floor before. And so they were all there and people were looking forward to playing with those. You know, some of the newer Fuji medium format, so-called medium format uh, cameras, uh, you know, some of the Canon. So-called, Nikon, so-called. Mirrorless so-called. Cameras. I've, I'm, I'm totally with you on that I'm one. I'm with you. Me too. <clears throat> me too. The slightly bigger yeah yes yeah what are they 44 by 55 i think aren't they those yeah, like, instead yeah, of 36 not... by 24 or whatever it is. anyway never mind um <laughs> so so the you know so i'm looking at all this stuff and thinking yeah great and and but it feels very iterative right because you know to me now digital cameras are a pretty mature thing we then went through after dslrs we then went through the the mirrorless thing but now mirrorless is very very mainstream you know everybody's pushing their mirrorless cameras and it's and i don't i've never liked the term mirrorless i mean why would you define the type of camera you shoot by something that's not in it I mean, it's just absolutely <laughs> absolutely daft but um it's like saying i've got uh, you know it, it's like saying i've got um an apple free camera right there's no apples in my camera so like no carrots either or or horses anyway never mind i digress um the, so the, the interesting thing, though, that around this um, uh, area of the show called the Analog Spotlight, there are there are people now who are building businesses. There are people who are hiring staff. Right? They came two years ago to the last you know, face-to-face show as, as singletons, just starting out. One guy, uh, uh, I won't n- name, um, two years ago, he said to me, he said, if I don't sell what I've bought, I can't make my mortgage payment next month. You know, and there were people who were really living very much trying to do, do the entrepreneurial thing, but living very much, you know, hand to mouth, maybe. And this year, they're all back with their staff, right? <laughs> they got like, they're all wandering around, shaking hands with people and chatting with their friends while their staff are on uh, are manning the stands. You know, there are new labs being opened, uh, new, you know, new development, scanning, you know, printing labs. But uh, there are new, uh, there are new products coming to market. You know, some of some you know, new iterations of some of the you know pe- people like. Um, 
uh, intrepid cameras who uh, uh, who make the, and um, uh, what's the other, the other one? I can't remember the other. Chroma cameras, uh, both who make uh, medium format stuff. Um, uh, sorry, large format cameras. Sorry, four by fives and eight by tens. Um, they're there with new products. Yeah, the, 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 and, and they haven't had to kickstart those products. They funded the development of their new products through the sales of their old products. What you a know. concept. <laughs> I, that's crazy. I know, it'll never catch on. It'll never catch on. Um, <laughs> and, and all of these people are, are there growing their businesses, bringing new projects to market, bringing new products to market. Um, and uh, and you know what? The, the, the thing that really... Uh, brought it home to me was we we were having late in the afternoon we were all very tired and we'd all settled in the bar and uh, uh, and one of my friends came over to me said you need to talk to this guy over here I said well where is he what is it what's up and he said oh he's from Kickstarter and he's here to find out how he can support the photography community so Mm -hmm. Kickstarter have got a project on Kickstarter the business not somebody doing a Kickstarter but Kickstarter the company had somebody covering the photography community <laughs> to try and do educational work to try and help them with the financing things help these things through it's, and it's I, not surprising so much innovation in photography in terms of design of peripherals and adjunct stuff has emerged out of uh kickstarter i you know yeah. having personal experience with waiting two years for said product which when it arrives uh, is you're not the only one Uh, there yeah Mm -hmm. (laughs) really i thought i was the only one uh, (laughs) that i'd been singled out for late delivery Uh, but um uh, i i i do think that it it gave a a real kick in the pants to people who had an idea who had enough understanding of supply chain and getting things prototyped and how to Mm -hmm. manufacture it. Of course, there was a lot of learning for most, uh, if not many. And uh, I think an explosion of really interesting design, maybe not cameras or lenses, but certainly, um, like, uh, what do I have on my iPhone? You know, this little, what are the, um, what's that company Peak Design. Peak Design. Peak Design. They emerged out of it. Some of their products are absolutely spectacular. Most of them, yeah, they're so, well so, thought out. Yeah, well, as I was talking to see that, as I was talking to this guy from Kickstarter, you know, and I was, I, I was, um, I decided to push him a little bit, and I said, you know what, if you're looking to support the analog film community, there are some gaps, right, where Kickstarter could maybe make a difference. I said, because you can see these people down. As I looked down the table, there was about twenty of us gathered for a beer. And I looked down the table, there was probably half a dozen, li- literally half a dozen successful Kickstarter people on this table. There, there was Max from Intrepid, there was Steve from Chroma, there was Stephen Dowling who runs Cosmo Photo, there's Hamish who did Pixelator. That's the, uh, the that, creme that's de la creme there. That's that the... was the four, yeah, that was four, four people that, are, yeah, that I'm fortunate enough to know off the top of my head who were all sat around the set same table or who have successfully brought kickstarter based products to market or kickstarter funded you know, products to right. market and a guy from kickstarter so this is real stuff this is a analog is real business now and it's a growing business which is which is amazing and whoever is thought it, we'd get to say that <laughs> well is it is it uh emerging at a pace or is it the vinyl of photography which oh. by the way i you know i you know, say that vinyl is outselling right uh, cds now right? so so what i've i've um uh, seen is uh is the whole f- analog photography thing which used to be called photography um <laughs> <laughs> at, at one point dipped really hard because of digital taking over and giving us all those benefits and uh, um, of course taking things away but people didn't notice that and then it had a resurgence. Um, that's when Monica and I wrote the, the film photography handbook, which was in t- 2015. And we thought this was a short, a short uh, uh, peak and that would dip again. But it had, that hasn't happened. It has continually climbed and climbed and climbed. And uh, so is it the vinyl? Well, if you look at what, what, what vinyl's doing right now, um, probably, yeah, that's probably what, yeah. it's, it's doing really good. That, yeah, That's right. It, it is growing every year. There are more plants 
opening to press records. Remember records? Oh, there's, oh, even, yeah. there's yeah. even cassettes. Or as we said, there's even cassettes re- now. Yeah, re- yeah that, I don't understand <laughs> why people... Me you can, you <laughs> can... There are artists releasing tracks only on 8-track. Yes. If you look hard yeah. enough. And, you know and that's I'm looking an, an America-only format. That's not even in Europe. We don't do 8-track. <laughs> we never had 8-track. Yeah, I don't, I'm looking forward to seeing loads of magnetic tapes strewn along the side of the highways again. Yeah, that was always a yes. good fun one. Yes. <laughs> but it's... Um, so, yeah, this was... like Anyway like amazing so so yes the future of photography is bright seems to be um, seems to be and my 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 considered <laughs> seems my to considered be analog. thought my considered thought uh of all of this is that that's where the movement is the analog community um and it's it's getting to be more than a community it's a viable business marketplace now yeah there still is a lot of community around it but it's definitely a viable marketplace now. so after, uh, well, after I, sorry go ahead Jeremy. No, I was I was going to say that there is an attraction, um, and and I see that you know I'll take a sort of a global picture now. Obviously, since my deep, deep, deep dive of which I have not emerged from the NFT world, and I'm talking about it, it, in general, that a lot of the um, uh, focus culturally is is all about nostalgia and all about what we grew up with or what we aspire to, whether it's gaming, photography, music, video games. Um, And uh, an interesting entrepreneur, Gary Vernicek, quite well known in that community, uh, marketing, etc. He's always said that you can spot trends uh, that will be very valuable in 20 years. in terms of what, say, 14 to 18-year-olds are really into now. Ah, and, and, and if you kind of just put a few away, <laughs> just package them, those will become very valuable collectibles mm-hmm. when they reach middle age because there is a yearning to reach out for that. Now, that that's you know happening on a parallel track, to the aesthetic of film, because film does have an aesthetic that is very specific, and those of us who are kind of conscientious about presenting work in uh, uh, an aesthetic process, not necessarily digital versus analog, but digital and analog. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm as as responsible for you know combining stuff that I've shot on camera and adding all kinds of digital work and then blending them and all of that stuff. So you don't know what what end is what. Um, But, but, but I do think that is uh, there, there, both forces are coming. The, The kind of reach out for the instant picture that you can hold in your hand that is giftable um, that is also part of nostalgia, but also has a look. And I I think. And it's one of a kind. And one of a kind. Yeah. I think Mm. those are, those are important in how these forces um, develop energy in in the market and in the culture. And I think that's m- maybe what we're seeing in analog photography now is both a trend of the hands-on, the visceral, the fingerprints of it, even the scratches and the the, the kind of glitches that occur naturally in the process of developing and and printing mm-hmm. are things that warm it up, that make it more human. Um, as opposed to the cool digital. Now, of course, you know, we went through this with CDs when everybody was thinking, oh, I, I so much prefer my vinyl because the CD sounds so cold. It's so clean. <laughs> and like, so you had a lot of engineers going like, yeah, I'm going to put some clicks and pops in there yeah. so you're more comfortable. Uh, you know, uh, eventually that stuff subsided and, 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 a good song, a good piece of music, well mixed, well balanced, is a good piece of music. If I play a CD of, say, Miles Davis and my vinyl of Miles Davis, yeah, to my ear, I prefer the vinyl. But honestly, I'm listening to the song. That, that, yes. that's that's it. And the same thing goes with photography. It's the image, right? Yeah. I it's, just it's, I just had a, I just had a I just had a Miles Davis thing with Apple. They are now uh, they have just released Kind of Blue. Uh, the album in uh, Do- Dolby Atmos Spatial Audio. Oh, really? And if oh, you if you nice. listen to that with a pair of um, well, the ones that I have that support spatial audio are the AirPods Pro. Um, yeah. And all of a sudden, you are 
you sit in front of the stage yeah. and it's an amazing experience and they have a whole does it sound good does it I it sounds know. it sounds i personally and i'm I, I used to do well i do audio professionally um to me, it is it is a very different experience, and I have come to really like it, and it didn't take long for that. Um, ah, so spatial spatial audio, just just as a little sidebar here, is uh, is something to to watch out for. So so that that's really interesting. So for just just very quickly for those that don't know what Dolby Atmos is, my best understanding of it is that instead of having stereo where you just choose the balance between left and right, right. you have. Uh, coordinates in a three-dimensional space and yes. you assign a sound to come from a coordinate you could have you know top left or back over my shoulder or, or behind and me and on and the floor and it's not and surround it's it's different from surround which which yeah. defines the speakers and things coming from those speakers but it is more a more a virtual a construct a that will then be translated yeah. into the actual sound when you listen to it and I thought it was a gimmick. I am in the process of revising that. Oh, interesting. Um, <laughs> interesting. I think you've already revised it. Yes, but, I but, the sound uh, of it, yeah. But. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yes. Is that is that on Apple Music they released yes, it? Yes, it is. They it is. Um, and... Uh, Sorry for everyone who has no has no way to experience that right now, <laughs> but it will sooner or later seep into into the mainstream. For Joe, sure. I have to jump down the Apple rabbit hole by the AirPods Pro and sign up for the the Apple Music subscription to get all of that at the moment. Then, <laughs> yes. but I'm sure that will change over time. <laughs> I'm sure that Ad Adrian at the at the show. Did you see any um, uh, devices, add-ons, lenses, uh, both that uh, that apply to the iPhone? Uh, yes, actually, um, I did. There was uh, one company at least who was there, and uh, forgive me that I forget their name at the, at the moment, uh, who had uh, a device that you slide your phone into that gives it a proper grip and a, and a more dead, you know, the feel, the ergonomics of a more dedicated camera. And then they also sold their own lenses that you could use for that. So, so there was definitely that. Um, okay, the, let, let, let me rephrase uh, Jeremiah's question. Was there anything, um, anything new or revolutionary for the iPhone? Because what ah, you just told us about has been around for <laughs> years. Right. No, there's nothing even new. Interesting. interesting. Interesting, yeah. Anything interesting for phones in general? Um, no, not that it was new. Not that I saw... I mean, I mean we, we've, so, we've had accessory lenses, we've had accessory grips, we've mm -hmm. had accessory cameras, we've had accessory gimbals, um, yes. pa and so perhaps, on. Perhaps some of the one, one of the reasons. So, so notable by their absence were some of the uh, some of the Chinese ah, off-brand vendors. Um, so, so what you would get normally at this show is uh, is a handful of stands that are selling lots of stuff that may or may not be Alibaba specials, but you know they are they are lower end of the market Chinese manufactured photography equipment um, uh, and uh, would those typically yeah, be present at the photography show? Yeah, there's one or two distributors. So the way it works in the UK, at least, is is is, is um, the, the Chinese manufacturers tend to appoint a distributor. So it'll be you'll go mm. to a stand and it'll have the weirdest name. It'll just be like you could be just like John Smith Co. or something like that. And then you'll find out that they've got these these crazy lights or these gizmos for phones or or stuff like that. They they were notable by their absence this time around, presumably uh, because of travel restrictions or or what have you. I mean, not not that perhaps the manufacturers' representatives come over themselves, but maybe I don't know maybe there's the it, it was uh, a, a bit too much for the distributors to support a show like right. that. Do they? Do they? Uh, did you see any uh, specific lighting um, technology or objects or functionality in software? <sighs> Again, not massively uh so um th those who've been listening to this podcast for a while might remember that last time i went to the show in 2019 i reported on a company called matterport who had dedicated hardware for 3d, 3D real scanning estate modeling yeah. 
um, and that they were moving into you being able to use the Rico Theta 360 cameras uh, for for that same aim, uh, which I thought was you know, a cool you know consumer grade version of what they've been doing. Um, they were there. Um, uh, and they look to have a, a smaller version of their dedicated hardware, but I mean that 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 wasn't a new concept. Um, I didn't see that the in terms of lighting, no, nothing particularly dramatically new. I mean, yeah, you know, I guess maybe the RGB lights uh, uh, are maybe more of those and a bit more of a mature technology than they used to be. But again, nothing massively groundbreaking. Um, this is why I was so yeah. This is why I was struggling to be honest. Because I was struggling to right. think about well, what what do I report that is interesting for TFOP listeners? And it all came out for uh, you know on the analog side. Just give it. Just give you an example. A couple of things uh, actually. And um, Chris, I dropped into our shared photo fo- photo album just a, a shot of the exhibition floor, um, uh, which which might be interesting to show. So so one of the stands, I think it was the Fuji Instax stand, um, had a little. Sp- spiral staircase that you could go up you could get i don't know 10 to 12 is that in the, the show, show notes I... uh no it's in it's in our shared icloud photo album oh give me a second i'll open it while you talk oh uh, sorry i should put it in the show notes as well i, I just wanted to tell i took this just to give an idea of of you know how things were working uh for, for all the analog guys and then we'll do a zoom in in a minute to a couple of specific uh things that really caught my interest um, so the, the 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 this first shot, uh, yes, that's the one. Thank you, Chris. So this is just a shot from the top of the Fuji Instax stand, and you can see there across the exhibition hall, there's a massive banner hanging from the ceiling called Analog Spotlight. Uh, you can see just if it, it might be difficult to discern, but at the bottom of the picture, there's a few people sat in a little open air theatre uh, with a uh, and there's uh, people doing presentations uh, there. So we had so the Analog Spotlight light area was a big area it was it was not a second class citizen to anything else uh it had its own little theater where there was a whole program of presentations you know every hour or so throughout the whole of the the three days of the show um and you know a lot of the uh a lot of the people that sell analog products even if they weren't particularly associated with the effort behind analog spotlight were there and so yeah i would happen to be stood on the instax stand just off camera left was the patterson stand and the pa- patterson always come and they bring loads of developing tanks and stuff like that and the guys and they, from patterson and they, and they're awesome. all british companies patterson uh, they, ilford and so on yeah, yeah. there's a lot you of concentration of the, in the analog shop, world actually. in britain yeah, so Matt and Michelle from Ilford were there. Uh, good to catch up with them. They had a crazy little thing. So, do you know when you go to, um, they had a dark room, a portable dark room tent. I see so that you know, in your you know Sunny 16 week video. A tent yeah, it was that awesome. you can just, just put away somewhere. Yeah, it folds up nice and small. Um, and if you imagine, for those that have been camping and you sometimes see like a privacy tent for getting, uh, for getting changed in or something like that. Um, it's it's one of those. There's just enough room to put a little camping table in there, and you can put your trays and your your, your uh, cans and stuff in that. And you you can actually in the field pop up your darkroom tent. They say it's very light tight. <clears throat> they've tested it. It's on the market, um, uh, and you know they've got that there. Um, so he, we know, here's it- here's a story about a light tight uh, um, development tent, which you could buy here in Germany. Um, as a as a German army surplus thing, so they oh, right. used to have tents that you could, yeah, light tight tents for exactly that purpose. Um, from the days when that was a thing and uh, was needed for the military. Um, so those were these olive green things with with steel frames and so on. That thing weighed. A friend of mine bought one. Uh, that thing weighed. I don't know. I'll have to venture a guess, but we're probably talking about 200 kilos. I mean, Oof. really <laughs> big, heavy thing. You so, probably need a practical. trailer on your car to move pra- it pra- around. Practical. Super practical. And uh, <laughs> that, that thing from Ilford looks like it is just a tent that weighs maybe it is a something couple of kilos that you can pop or something. It, yeah, it, it'll weigh just a few kilos, five, ten kilos tops. Um, that doesn't mean it's not robust. It just means it's designed for a different purpose. Right? Absolutely. And, and it's 
uh, and is absolutely and, fit. And for, and for those people who who used to convert their bathroom but don't want to do that anymore, you can just pop this up in your living room and you could it. you could yeah. absolutely use it indoors. You don't have to use it as a field tent. You don't have to go out to use your dark room. You could absolutely but use it in the house. Uh, and what's it, nice, you know, what's nice about that is you know you're out in a beautiful pristine area breathing the clean beautiful air generated and the developer thousands. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and then you get to kind of cut yourself off from that and really inhale oh, yeah. the chemistry <laughs> of, of the past. Uh, I, I can't see why that's a bad thing. I no, no, it, it's it's all good. So there's one other, one, or a couple of others actually, but one I really wanted. This for me wins, you know, crazy interesting product idea of the show and it's a thing called pinster which is um hopefully you can call that up on the, yes, on the screen Hold Chris. On. Hold on. so so pinster uh, a, a chap called oliver who i met there um uh, and i this was news to me i wasn't aware of that this one was coming um so so pinster um if uh, it's a it's a camera and a dark room uh, and a developer, like a, a printing developer, and a developer all in one, right? So and, so and an enlarger, a, you can copy an enlarger. negatives Sorry, I in miss there it. as yeah. well. Yeah, it, it it does all sorts of stuff. Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> and I've seen he was demonstrating this. So so first of all, as a camera, it will shoot positive paper. So this little picture you're showing on the screen there, Chris, um, it, you you put some uh, some uh, I think four by five um, positive paper into your camera, and you can and you can shoot it. Uh, and it'll yeah you'll you'll get the the image then what you do is uh you it comes with three syringes uh so <laughs> i'm guessing that's developer fix and wash or something like that yeah? yes yes um and uh you what you can do is there's a space in the camera where you can inject the chemicals and and you can agitate it and and shake it around well you not shake it but agitate it so that it it will actually in the box uh develop and fix uh, and wash the the positive uh positive image yeah but on on the paper that you shoot so that's the that's the camera and the, and the developer bit then you can also he's got the, there's a mount when you can you can take it apart and you can take um and he was doing this with uh i think a six by six negative just to show us how it was done but he was doing demonstrations on the stand at the show about how you take a six by six negative there's a little holder you put into that put that, that secures it in the right place inside the box inside the camera box and then you can use it i forget how he what, what he was using as a light source um but then you can uh you can use that as an enlarger to, to print something out it's just just awesome so stuff. here's here's the thing here's the thing have you ever heard of the Af the afghan pinhole cameras have you heard uh, of those? so i know what an afghan camera is it's a it's an enormous box isn't it where it's a big have, wooden where, box and it you, shoots you, used Famously by Afghani street photographers, and exactly. not street photography uh, in the run and gun sense, uh, but have your portrait that, taken in the street. Yes, and then and then I, you develop I have, inside I have the, pictures. Yeah, yeah. And, and you develop inside that camera, and you enlarge inside that camera, and this is this is a very modern uh, take of the Afghan pinhole camera. <laughs> yeah, which exactly. is mind blowing. Yeah, it is. Yeah, and it's, I. I have photos, and amazing, they've lasted at least uh, a decade, maybe a little bit longer, that uh, Sue and I had street photographer in Havana. Um, uh, okay. Right. Same same deal, uh, took the picture. We have uh, we got to know him because we just thought, oh, this is great. We got to know the old oh, man, uh, just beautiful. And we had stuff, and you could actually inscribe it right so wow. you know brutalistly is so that's yeah fantastic. that's 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 interesting because that is uh, inspired by something that has been around for over a hundred years pretty hundred, much yeah, yeah absolutely and and this is yeah just a, uh, this will be pinster is not on kickstarter yet so the prototype is done i saw it working demoed at the show and it's it's actually it's a legitimate working product it's uh, and i've seen it myself with my own eyes and the results are just yeah such great fun and good res and technically good results results as well uh and it will be a kickstarter soon i think uh i think it's coming in five or six weeks or so i think to kickstart i think the website uh says that there's a kick yeah that it's it's due to be on kickstarter shortly so yeah it's you know uh good luck to that one it's it's a lot of fun um and uh you know that's just another example of of some innovation so some some of the future of photography um and uh you know just just it was good fun 
So is, is this, does that mean the future of photography is lies in the past of photography? I don't think it does. I don't. I don't think. Or is it? Or is it a rethinking of the past of photography and bringing it into the present and into the future? So, so the thing that makes it different from vinyl records for me is this: when you buy a vinyl record, you're you're a consumer, okay, and that's a great thing. And, and it, you know, if you, you are an informed consumer and you are making a, a personal choice of how you would like to consume the music. With analog photography, you're not just consuming photo photography, you're, you're, you're creating, you're creating something new, which it are, for me, that makes it a different thing from, from vinyl records. I mean, I, I guess, uh, I, I guess it's a reflection It feels at ground level anyway uh, that that analog isn't just for people who, who with one foot in the past anymore. Yeah, you know, there's a lot. There's a lot of people way younger than me, people who are digital natives who are really embracing this, and not just in the flash in the pan way. In a, in a it, oh, it's a trend or a fad, but actually people who are who are too young to have shot film ever are now starting businesses related to analog photography. It feels like it's got legs. Now I, I'm aware that I might be imposing my own confirmation bias on that. You know, I may just want it to be true, <laughs> but, but it 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 feels like it's a real is a real thing here. I mean, it's a very UK centric view, of course, because I'm talking about UK people, yeah, British people starting businesses in the in the UK. But yeah, maybe of, it's a like lot that of trends in other have as well. a lot of trends have emerged in the UK, and then. Kind of spilled yeah, over into the rest stuff. of Europe, you know. Well, yes, yes, of course. Um, I rem I remember back in the eighties, a I lot think of that the was music. Scotland, by the way, or Scotland. Uh, a lot of things in the in 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 my youth, um, especially from the music field, came over from the UK, from London, from other places. Yes. Um, so there was a lot of trend setting going on, and isn't isn't using something old, something existing, and Putting it together in a new way and and combining things into something new isn't that the isn't that the the the, yeah. the, the basis I, of I, the basis of creativity? Sure, I, I I think that that you're onto something. Um, I, I think that one can make a distinction in terms of these tools. Call them tools. One that are focused on a result. In other words, the final image whether it's a sharp lens, whether it's a filter or high ISO or astrophotography, macrophotography, etc., We put together our tools because of a result. And then there are tools such as this camera that are about process. So we get lost in the process, the process of the chemistry, the slow, and we've talked about this. And, and there's on, nothing on, wrong with that. We're podcast. not judging here. No, right? no, no. No, in, fa in fact, uh, I, for one, celebrate more the process than I do the result. If the result turns out to be <laughs> great, I'll take all the accolades. But the experimentation and the flow of, of kind of combining, you know, some of the, the stuff that I've been doing lately is, is all digital. And, but I, I'm using maybe, you know, five to eight different um, – applications or software combinations, um, some traditional, some very experimental, to, to just flow together. And I just get lost in that process. Um, so I think the process itself, like when one's painting, um, when one's recording, uh, there is this beauty, and artists know the feeling. Uh, there have been books and books about it. Uh, and, and I think when one is developing an aesthetic or a product, one really has to be conscious of what the in, the initiative is for that. Is it about inviting people into a process where they lose themselves creatively in building something so that the final picture of that camera having gone through it is so satisfying because of the elements that built up to it, even in its glitches or defocused or whatever, but it is a unique, beautiful um, 
moment in time. I, I find that to be, in a way, more exciting than buying gear to take a microscopic picture or, or, or just setting out to do a documentary that is exactly what one uh, expected. And that's the result, because as I think we know that no final work is exactly what we want. It's either better or worse. <laughs> that's been my, you know, my experience yeah. in, in, in anything. It, you know, you, you set out with a goal and it's either on one side or the other of one's expectations. Mm. Okay. So. Yeah. Well, there we go. Um, I mean, that, that's my report from the photography show. It was really great to be there. It Thanks was for doing great this. to see people. Um, yeah. uh, people so, so this is a very UK-centric thing now, but people do shake hands again now, uh, often <laughs> in the UK. We, we also bump elbows. Uh, uh, there, there is less hugging than there might usually be, but you know, it's, you know, it, it's nice to be able to be out. And in the case of, of as long as you're sensible, not be afraid to be around other people and, and right. that's that was a really good feeling as well to get everybody together so. not right. there yet <laughs> yeah it's 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 it's, uh, it's slow but it's it's moving there um let us move on to the picks of the week i brought one that is pretty much along those lines of putting something old and something new together um do you guys no, um, well, Jeremiah certainly knows how instant photo photography was, well, initially more, more, more of a tool than an artistic expression mm -hmm. uh, thing, where like large format photographers would, would set up their shot and then they would take an instant photo to judge the composition, the sharpen, sharpness, the, 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 the exposure and everything. And then they would put the proper film on there. Um, so it was a, used as a tool of as that and then for for quite some time there was pack film which was four by five so you could use it on a large format camera and it would give you a true representation of what you were getting and then that four by five film went away and then fuji i think they still made the 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 100 series the smaller than four by five uh, which could still be used but that went away in I think 2016, and uh, there were some experiments of that, and it has never come back, and it still isn't really back 4x5 instant film. But um, Lomography, the guys from Austria, have brought out an instant 4x5 back, which, again, is not really 4x5. It's called the Lomograph Lock, so it fits on international 4x5 format backs, uh, any large format camera, and it uses... Instax wide, so that's a that's a that's an instant format which isn't quite four by five, but it's. I think you're kind, being a bit generous there. <laughs> it's kind of close-ish. So here on the on the on the uh, video, you can see the size again. Four by five would be would cover more of that, but uh, Instax wide is is at least a stand-in, um, and it's the first time that you can now officially take your 4x5 camera, uh, put that back on it, pop in Instax Whites, which is which is more affordable than going on eBay and buying old FP100 stock from Fuji, which oh, yeah. I think, I mean, I think is like 10 is, bucks a shot. Through um, yeah, through yeah remember 50, 55N? Yeah, you're, new 55. We're, we're, we're talking about 20 bucks a shot. So this is like in the one dollar a shot kind of range and uh that is certainly more affordable and you can use all your all your large format lenses and all your movements on the camera and everything that you want to do and get some um i'm i'm pretty sure quite spectacular stuff out of this so i'm yeah. definitely gonna get one of those it's not cheap it's 150 euros here in germany but uh -huh. I, I think it's a really good thing to see it out. I mean, it's it's not something that I have any uh, requirement for, uh, not being a large format shooter myself. But I, I think it's really cool to see. Yeah, for me, for me, through. it's it's it, it really it really got my my fingers itchy. I just think I want to get mm -hmm. my hands on one of those. So yeah, this old stuff combined with new stuff. We have a new kind of film stock instant that is affordable, and we have old old technology that this interfaces with. So. Yeah, yeah, pretty cool. Absolutely. All right, Adrian, your pick of the week. My, well, my pick of the week is shameless self-promotion. Um, 
It's the video. <laughs> it is a bit. So, so my pick of the week, yeah, is, is there'll be a link in the show notes, uh, of course. Uh, to this is to the Sunny Sixteen uh, video of the photography show twenty twenty one. Uh, we had because four of us were there. We had the luxury of, of running around with a camera and rec- and sound recording, yeah, all, all day, uh, and speaking to to a lot of people. Um, you'll see, uh, of course, being Sunny Sixteen, uh, it is a very analog focused video, but it it give you a, some insight into the world that I've just yeah, been we, describing for the we last. We just established. We so. just established that that's the future of photography. <laughs> It is, it is. The, uh, and, uh, you know, um, uh, it's, it's a great, uh, it's, it's a great thing to see. And, and thanks to my, my colleagues and friends uh, in the Sunny 16 crew. Thank you to, to Graham and to John and to Claire, who, who all worked hard on that video from that day. Um, but you can check that out. Uh, it's the, I say link in the, in the show notes, or you can just go to Sunny 16 podcast channel. Uh, on youtube and and catch other stuff there as well all right jeremiah do you have a pick of the week Uh, i do Uh, i sent it to adrian for some reason i've been locked out of workflowy because it's a new computer and Mm. he's got it it's a a uh just, Art, just it calling it up now. Art. It is the TT Artisan's okay. new 40 mil f 2.8 macro, uh, and that's coming. That's a new lens coming out from TT Artisan's, uh, and it's coming out for Micro Four Thirds, Fuji X mount, and Sony E mount. Uh, it's a 40 mil f 2.8 macro lens, and apparently, according to this link you sent me, Jeremiah, only 113 dollars, which is unbelievable. <laughs> and anyone, anyone who's used this TT lens, the, these um, TT artisan lens, they are very specific. They're quite beautiful. You know, one can't say that they are, you know, like a glass, but they're um, they're very manipulu manipulatable. <laughs> In that, that's a new word for me. <laughs> Whatever it is, one can manipulate these lenses rather easily. Uh, the, when you get it, you actually have to set it up um, by adjusting the back plate and 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 uh, to focus. Oh wow! And, and they give you focus marks and whatnot to actually set it up, which can be a little intimidating until you actually do it, and then it is absolutely amazing. I've got a couple that I've picked up over the years, not this one, of course, um, as interim lenses when I just needed something fast and furious or I was going to work in conditions that I knew would destroy the lens, um, <laughs> uh, which I didn't. But but uh, they're affordable, they're great, and they have a, a very distinct quality. And I think they copy a lot of the uh, German-Swedish lens engineering, uh, but do it in Asian style. And so it's uh, they, they're... Very, very um, uh, impressive. I wasn't even yeah. aware of the brand. I'll have to look into that. Oh, have you not? Oh, oh you not? I know they've been around oh, for a few years now. They they do yeah. things like they'll do a, a fifty mil f zero point nine five and and things right. like that. So they they tend to make they tend to go for for the niche um, uh, in terms of the lenses they oh, yes. offer. Apparently, uh, they do. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you can get other, I think they do like full frame 11 mil lenses and stuff like that. And, and yeah, they, 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 they are, um, they're finding their niches and, and they're bringing more products to market. And actually, do you know what? I, I don't have any myself, but th- this one actually looks really interesting because I don't have a macro lens. Um, and it's not something that I would go out and choose to spend many hundreds of dollars or pounds right. or euros on. See if you like it. You buy it, you see if you like it, and you go, I want better quality. Then you sp- instead of spending 150 pounds, you spent fifteen hundred pounds. Well, <laughs> may, maybe, <laughs> but, but there's another way of looking at this, though, Jeremiah, which is that I have a macro capability on my Olympus Tough camera, my little pocket point and shoot, which is fantastic. You get so close with that, like yeah, just a, a centimeter or so, um, and that's great. But ultimately, it's got a, a fairly old and fairly tiny sensor in it. If there was something that was a step up, so it's not. Oh well, yeah. I wouldn't think of a lens like this as a as a, a compromise. I would think of it as a step up. Yeah, it depends where you're stepping up from. Yeah, 
Well, in my and, case, and we haven't, and we haven't made. If it's the basement, then for sure. And we haven't if made a comparison roof. to the new iPhone 13 Macro modus, I, uh, mode on the. I was. Oh, I'll try that I was, next week. Mine arrives I was, next week. Yeah. I was going to ask about that, but I'll do it off, off I've, air. Yeah. Well, I've um, ordered the new one. Uh, the, I, I've decided that my um, my iPhone 12 Pro Max now I'm out and about is just a little bit too big. So for the first time ever, I'm going to have consecutive issues of iPhones. And I've ordered the iPhone 13 Mini. So okay, back, we'll back have a look world. at that soon. Um, thanks, yeah. everyone, for watching. This is the end of this episode. And uh, we'll be back soon with more. Until then, everyone. One, take care and uh, make sure you check us out on our social media at default now till then bye bye sure. bye you've been listening to the future of photography subscribe to the show wherever you get your other podcasts Find the show notes and more information at thefutureofphotography.com.